Hey guys, Dan, it's live. We have a little two-parter for you. We're gonna be doing some dry-aged meats, some pork, and some beef. We're gonna head over to Prime Foods out in Long Island, see it on a big scale, and then we're gonna have the folks from Meat Hook come in and show me how to do this at home, so you could do it at home. And we can all dry-aged meat together and have fun and learn. All right, guys. So uh, we're over here at Prime Foods and uh, meeting up with John. He's gonna he's gonna show us around this fine establishment and uh, and, and learn a little bit about the dry age process, you know, and on, on a larger scale. I mean, there's one ingredient, right? I mean, essentially, we're yep. just dealing it's with beef. beef. Yep. I mean, other than what's in the air and the you know, without getting a microscope involved, right. it's, it's beef. Say, if myself wanted to get a piece of meat and try to dry age it, mm -hmm. where would you recommend sort of getting beef? Right here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah, you don't. I, I, I understand the question. So like you don't want to go to your general supermarket and just get No, I, you know, the reality is you might have a, a heck of a hard time just finding even the proper subprimal beginning piece sure. to start the dry aging process. Right. So what do we got going on behind us? What are these guys doing? So you're, literally you're looking at a wall of uh, probably over four or 500 short loins. Okay. We're in our selection cooler right now, so we're probably in about 36 to 38 degrees okay. right now. And what you're seeing here is a daily occurrence. So sure. oh, wow. this, this is gonna be gone by the end of today, and tomorrow we'll be doing the same thing over and over again. Do you, is this all gonna be dry aged, or is this? No, actually very little of this okay. will we'll okay, make cool. it into the dry aging process. It has to be right in every aspect for it to make it to the dry aging process. All right. So a lot of the pieces that won't make it into the dry aging process, there's nothing wrong with them. They're beautiful pieces, Absolutely. but nothing goes in there unless it's right to be dry aged. Sure, sure. I would love to see like two pieces of meat, like one that would qualify for the dry aging process, and then one that would, you know, wouldn't make sense. To Absolutely, dry we we got a couple of pieces up. Uh, exactly. Let's take a walk. That might do something like that. This is a perfect example of the spectrum that I was talking about. So these both both of these pieces are USDA prime, mm -hmm. but within that spectrum, there could be a huge variation. You see like the rosy color. Yep. You see the well distributed Marble. intramuscular marbling in the color. You see a good covering all throughout. It has the proper kind of fabrication. You know, on this piece, again, although it's USDA Prime, the marbling is not nearly as defined. Sure. Uh, even when this carcass was split, it wasn't split perfectly even. So if I were to lift the short loin, it won't have the bone on the bottom that of perfect it. perfect flat stance. Right. Or the bone that protects right. it through the dry aging process. Gotcha. So and you that, always want bone in? You always, yeah, we only, we only dry age bone in cuts. Right. Okay. We don't ever dry age boneless cuts. Now why is that? Because the bone and the fat are what protect the meat. Okay. So if you were to start gotcha. dry aging boneless meat, you're, you're dry aging all sides of it and dehydrating a cut on all sides. So eventually you're gonna have to trim that subprimal and cut steaks. Much more loss, cut, trim. But you're also gonna be trimming into the eye of the finished product and right. you don't wanna do that. You don't gotcha. wanna alter. There's a whole bone shield right. that you can just cut it right. out. You want a nicer fat marbleization in dry aging? Absolutely. Okay, so Absolutely. that'll benefit the dry aging process? It really does and, I, and like, and like I said, at the end of the day, you're not gonna go through all the trouble and right. effort of dry aging meat if it's not gonna be a spectacular steak. Sure. We're not targeting mediocre here. All right, great. I feel like I have a good idea of what we're looking for. My concern uh, with these cuts that we were talking about is will I be able to cut that at home without like, like doing that with a hacksaw sounds miserable and I don't have a bandsaw. For the piece that you want to dry it yourself, chef, yeah. we give you a, a rib piece that we've taken the chine bone off already. Perfect. And so then when the time comes and you want to enjoy it, you could just use your you knife. Pick your rib and cut. Pick your rib and cut in between and I can handle that. And go to town. You call me chef, huh? That's the first time ever. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, we we actually took the liberty, chef. Oh yeah, yeah. Nick, chef, this guy with the chef. Can I have that? Do your worst. We've got some, some labels here Woo! for you, and this is gonna end up in our dry age room. A little labeler and everything. And you could pick your own okay. you could pick your own piece. Have at it, and then we'll find a nice Tampering little... Tampering is punishable by death. I like it. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll, we'll find a nice little nook for it in our dry age room. Well, this one seems to have a pretty nice fat cap on it. Nice little, little marbleization. Uh, yeah? I think we're going to put your name on it, right? Or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Brad's product, and this is going to... We're going to find a nice little nook for it in the dry age room. You could pick that, too, and... Oh, perfect. And man. then we'll come back when it's ready and... Well, uh, speaking of this dry age room, should we uh, take a peek yeah, at that operation? Let's go take a look, yeah. Right. To the dry age okay. room. Moment of truth. Are you, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Huh? Okay. It's gonna punch me in the face, yes. isn't it? No. No. No, you should, should be like, uh, just fall into it. Oh my God. Oh, it's almost Welcome. like. Whew. Come on in. Come on in, you're letting the fuck so this out. Is
Please, chef, have a seat. I feel like Brad, you're the mob. Welcome, welcome to our round table. Yeah, man. So what exactly is happening in here? It's cold. I noticed there's no lights other than what you, you know, for us. Sure. There's a lot of things happening. We're, we're running simultaneous heat and cold to try to balance the moisture and the temperature. You have the high velocity fans, which obviously you hear, the black lights that and we run into. And you need that. You need that. You need every, you need every component of every that. Every component. So we got air moving. We're, we're trying to pull moisture out of the beef? Regardless of whether we're trying or not, it's going to happen. Okay. And so uh, what we're really trying to do is just safeguard what we feel are the best conditions that are necessary to produce optimally dry aged, flavorful beef. Right. You don't want bacteria, you don't want any kind of pathogens, anything like that going on the meat. We want our meat aging, not rotting. Not rotting. So it's not, sure it's, it's breaking down in a sense, yes. but with what? With enzymes and, and things Correct. that are already in the beef? You want so the naturally occurring enzymes. Not what's right. in the air. You don't want the process to happen from the outside in. This isn't cheese. Okay. You want the enzymatic degradation happening in the connective tissue within the meat, working its way out. Oh, gotcha. So it's like when you look behind us, where you get like that bark or that crusty, uh, like, I hate to say the word, but like scabby kind of set. So that's not adding the flavor. That's you're sealing what's inside. Yes. You want a firm crust. You don't want any indications of rot. No, no questions asked. You never, ever want that on dry HB. Right. If you saw it on anything else, would you eat it? Right. You wouldn't. If you right, saw right. it on chicken or pork or veal or lamb. So why have it on your beef? Our personal touch is, like we did together, really looking at each piece, making sure the quality is what it needs to be, and, and the, rest of the, the rest of the process in here, the, the beef knows what it needs to do. Sure, sure. This has been happening for thousands of years, okay. before traditional refrigeration and... Uh, Just like I do a lot of fermentation. You know, that was right. the original, before there was refrigeration. That's how they preserved Absolutely. and carried food for longer periods of right. time. So like, I like how you said that. This is not a new thing. This is not new, no. Yeah. All right, well... Uh, we have the facility, obviously. Right. Um, <laughs> I reckon this might be a good place for me to place that I, piece of I, meat. I, I think imagine though, yeah? it, it would be. Matter of fact, we took the liberty, and uh, Nikki's gonna. Nick, you mind bringing oh, that ribbon? Nikki, there you go. The meat. Ah, oh, perfect. Thank you, Nikki. All right. <laughs> you got a spot for that? Yeah, bud. Front, front and center. There you go. So, John, how long do you think? Well, I guess I'm the client well, here. Sure, like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I like a real nutty flavor. I don't, I, I don't mind it to be what some restaurants will, might consider for the general population a bit aggressive. Okay. I kind of like it. If you're up for it, I'd say maybe we, we go for 45, 60 days. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we can, we can check in with you. Minimum 45. All right, we'll do 45, and then uh, if you can't make it here, we'll come in and we'll FaceTime a little bit and we'll show you <laughs> I love that, how your yeah. rib is doing, and you can let us know when you think it's ready. Oh, I love that. Thank you, man. What's the day today, the 6th? Yes. What is the day today? It is the 6th? 9-6, 2019. 11-6. What? It's 11. 11. Yeah, that's what I meant. All right, so we're back in the test kitchen. We're going to get going with dry aging some meat here. Try like hell. Brought in some pros from the meat. <clears throat> brought in some. <laughs> brought in some pros from the meat hook over in Brooklyn, one of my favorite butcher shops here <laughs> in the city. Well, I needed someone to help me because I don't. I don't know. Him. <laughs> you know. Uh, we'll make it up as we go along. I mean, we went today earlier. We were over at. Uh, Prime Foods over in Long Island. Yeah. With John. You guys met John there. We, we know, know John. John. Yeah, John's a good dude. So he sent us home with this nice piece of, of, uh, of rib meat. Same as what you guys brought. Right? Yeah. We but brought, very, very different looking. Yeah, we brought bone and ribeye as well, but very astute. They are very different. This is, I would assume, from John. Yeah. Grain fed, grain finished. For sure. This was born on a pasture, grass fed its entire life. This is probably, I would assume, somewhere between 12 and 18 months old. This was about 30 months old. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, A, the fat content is way different. And yeah. Like, yep. I'm kind of stoked. I, I, I can get into both. I can see here, if I flip it, it looks like this one, like, has already got a little age on it. So we already, all of the meat that we get it has already hung for yeah. two weeks. So this is 14 days of age. Hung as like a primal cut or? Hung as a whole animal. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so killed at the slaughterhouse, split down the middle, and then hung because it's got to go through the whole process of rigor mortis. And you said two weeks. Yeah, the rib sections we'll usually hold on to for another, another two weeks. So we'll hit that like prime 
28, 30 day mark, which mm -hmm. is what we That's both really like. That's your sweet spot you like? Um, wow. It's yeah. a personal, right? It's always personal a personal. Taste. Yeah. So this one we were at two weeks already. So maybe we'll go a 30 day. With both of them. With both of them. Cool. So this one will hit that 30 sweet spot. And then this one, it's got the two weeks on it. That's going to bring it to another little more nutty little. I'm very curious to see how the grass fed beef is, is going to age compared to the to the, to the other. It's going to be wildly different. Let's talk how we're going to pull this stunt off. Right? Okay. I know I've seen your guys' video, loved it. Oh, on, thanks. Yeah. On how you, uh, you did already what I'm brought you on to help me do. Uh, and that is create a dry aging atmosphere is essentially what we're trying to do, right? Totally. Uh, at home, yeah. or in this case, in the yeah. One World Trade Center. Yeah. Um, close yeah, you home. brought us on to do it, and we brought Chris Croner on to do it with us. So thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Love that guy. Let's start off. We got a, a mini fridge, okay? All right, over here, Hansi. Gentlemen. <laughs> Perfect. Over to the mini fridge. <laughs> mini fridge. We section. got just a standard mini fridge. And look, we just got a little fan in there. Okay? Ooh. And then good this, looking fan. Good looking fan. One of the best. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got That's that fan show. content. That's the stuff. <laughs> what then, are we even doing here? You don't even need us. You got the fan. And then this is just a little fancy doodad that, you know, you could do this probably without it, but what, if I have it, why not monitor it? And this is just going to tell us the, the humidity. In this atmosphere, what do we need to get a properly dry aged? Beef atmosphere. Only three things. Okay. Airflow, you already got it. That's the fan. That's the yep. fan. You got humidity controls, you want about 70 to 80%. And then the third thing you need is temperature control, which you have. You want to keep it under 41 degrees. All right, back over to the uh, to the workstation, all right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I asked back. you guys, uh, you know, I sent, we were driving over to um, Prime Foods, and I said, I know a couple people that have dabbled with doing some, some dry aged pork too. Well, boom, long story short, you bought a night, you brought in a nice little piece of, what is it, just a rib, yeah. rib chop? Yeah, yeah. It, shoulder end rib chop. Actually, pretty the much, classic pork pretty it, much the same, same part as these two right here. Right. Same thing. Just not a pig. Yep. And we'll just, we'll pop that in there too. Just a little experiment. I Why wanna not? see how it goes. Why not? You know? But uh, would that go the same amount of time as beef? No. No. I mean, you, you can. Hard no. You can, but. There are no rules, but no. Yeah, we differ on this. Brent. Go for it. What do you What do you think? Different saturated fats between beef and pork. This okay. has a higher saturated fat content. So uh, the fat content of pork is meant to be is meant to be dried, but it's meant to be dry cured. That's why pork works so well. Like prosciutto or exactly different than beef. You kind of really want to eat that as a steak, and it gets better actually dry aged. Sure. So you can do you can do this with pork, but you're probably only going to get a week, maybe two, out of it. So other than it's just a cool experiment, you don't think it's doing much for the. I mean, you went out of your way to get this amazing fridge, so right. you might as well. Oh, we're gonna try it. We're gonna eat it. Okay. No matter how it tastes, <laughs> and I promise you that. What do you think? I think we got one life to live. And I want to live it to the fullest. Oh, you guys are a cute couple. I'll tell you what. I exactly. Just, I just <laughs> you don't, don't mind if half of that life is with an upset stomach. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll yeah. take it. I think with this, I would monitor where your water loss is. What your water loss is at and not the number of days. So I would say, let's weigh this. We should probably weigh them all just so we know like, yeah, what we're doing. Yeah, I got my notebook. I got a pen. Oh, Hello. Here we go. Wow, science. Beef. John. Okay. And beef. Hook. Beef hook. We got a beef, beef hook. hook. We should probably, yeah. get, should we probably just trademark, trademark that. Second yeah. shot. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> stay away from that. That's ours now. Yeah. So old Johnny Boy's coming. What's he clocking in at? Three, one, three, two. Okay. I like even numbers. Three, one, three, two. Grams. Okay. All right. And this is beef hook. This is beef hook. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, Wait in at 4,900. Four. Oh, no. 4022. Let's say 4020. Okay. 4020. Okay. 40, Easy number. Little Puerco is 2211. All right. That back it? over to the box. <laughs> Johnny Boy. Johnny Boy. Johnny Boy, go right in there. Boom. Next. Beef Hook. Beef Hook. Coming in strong. Last but never least. That's right. Oh, you cute thing. Look at it. Yeah, the cutest little button. All right, great. Looks great. We've got our fan going. 
I'll keep an eye on the humidity. You said right around 70? Seven, anywhere between 70 and 90. 70 I, like, and 90. I like higher, so that way you get less water loss, but you're still having that <laughs> enzymatic ends. breakdown. Enzymatic breakdown. Back to the board, boys. Let's talk about that. Pretty, all we're doing with aging is trying to get rid of the effects of rigor mortis. So okay. we have the protein molecule. Rigor mortis being, yeah, like, I know what it is, what but in happens, case someone doesn't. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. What's it look like? It looks like that. That's it. Accurate. <laughs> we want to prevent that yeah. from happening. Like what you have when you go through rigor mortis is actin and myosin, which are the protein molecules that help you uh, kind of like firm your muscles up. Those are kind of like staying strong. Just get, yeah, there we go. <laughs> that was good. So this is something that would naturally happen. It would naturally happen. So say, so once, say uh, Charlie the cow kicks over in the pasture. Rigor mortis happens and then the enzymes, which now are pretty much dormant, they're gonna go buck wild and they just kind of attack all the proteins and they start breaking those down. So they start making the meat more tender, more flavorful, start converting the sugars. Mother Nature is a hell of an artist here, right? So I mean, like this is already pre-programmed into, yeah. into the meat. Yeah. And we're just trying to, to capture that, right? Exactly. It's setting up over time, you know, before the mushrooms come and the maggots out in the field with Charlie. Um, <laughs> what am I getting at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was with it, man. I was like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. 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 we're there. The, the now, when should I start weighing these for, for loss? Tomorrow? Next no, day? No, no, Give no. it a week. Give it a week. At least yeah. a week. Are we forgetting anything? Hugs? Hugs! <laughs> we did forget the hugs. Now get that hug in here. Oh, but yeah, there oh. it is. <laughs> Come on in here. Thank you, guys. Thank um, you. I'm going to try to get you guys back in here so we can, when we're done, we can do a little side-by-side -side taste of our dry age product. We gotta come back and eat the steak? Yeah, you're gonna have to come back and eat the steak. I know, I know. I know it's terrible, right? Oh. All right. Yeah, yeah, all right. Someone's gotta do it. It's in the contract. You guys signed something? No. <laughs> Shut, Shut it down. Shut, oh, down. Yeah. Shut it down. <laughs> all right, we're secure. It's a wrap. Fine work today, everyone. Except you, Kevin. <laughs>
Was it 3740? 3740. What was the OG? Uh, 4020. That's not, what? So that's only about a 7% loss? Oh, uh, no, no, no. 4200. 4200. This was a mistake. It had to have been. I forgot to tell you guys in the note taking. <laughs> I think when we jambled them down on Friday, we being me, I think I that one up. Actually, I think it might have been your fault. I think you might have said it wrong. Uh, I Definitely remember best now. Fault. Definitely, best Definitely. Fault. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. It's fine. It's fine. He said 4020, and I think he meant what you said, 4,200. 4, well, this scientific experiment is all, all <laughs> yeah, to exactly. a great start oh, already. We're going to do it again. It's not like we filmed no, it, it had to have been. before. No, it had to have been 4, 420. <laughs> okay. So we rolled 4, with 200. that. 4,200. Yeah. All right. So according to my math, as an uh, someone with no experience in math, that's an 11% loss. Okay. okay. I don't think it's right. I don't, maybe even 4,200 4, might not even be right. Really? It might be 40,000. <laughs> Next jo we'll do Johnny Boy. I can't believe how much this shrunk. That, that's insane. It's unbelievable. Twenty-five thirteen. That that's one. twenty percent loss. Twenty percent. Really? I think the pork might have shrunk the least. Oh, oh I'm, this I'm is so a, excited. I'm I'm so excited about this. You guys recommended fourteen days, but I was right. like, forget it. You know, these guys are coming in and, and, in thirty-two days, and uh, let's just let it go. It was kind of like doing happy things. Yeah. I, feel like because be the, I feel like because the humidity was significantly lower for a longer period of time and ours is higher, mm. like that's why it'll get sticky faster. Have you ever seen the movie Chud? Chud? Cannibalistic Chud? humanoid underground dwellers? <laughs> no. Okay. When we age pork in 90% humidity, that's what it looks like. Yeah. It looks like something that like grew up in like the New York sewer system. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then came out and terrorized the Moldy? city. Moldy? Moldy and like really sticky and... Wet. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. But, it's, but it, when That's you cut, why I was against it. Right, right. But when you cut into it, I like the flavor. It was primo. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, boys, I cracked the code. 18, you did it. All you right. did it. Lower you in the mail. Uh, 2211 to start. 1875. That is 15%. All right. Wow. Boom. Right there. So we were 15% we were pork. We were 20% on the Johnny boy. Johnny. And we were only 11%? 11%. On the boys. Interesting. This is, that's a wild fluctuation. Hunzi, you wanna get a cool shot? Yep. For the sake of sakes. You have feather bone percentage of loss. Get out of my frame, Hunzi. Can I get you in frame? Mm -hmm. That's the stuff. <laughs> I've never trimmed one up. Um, I'd love to watch one of you guys if you're comfortable doing one first. Absolutely. Start by taking the uh, feather bones off, which we don't have any here. Okay. But easy peasy. Sean took care of you. We did not. It's fine, guys. I never know. I'm just, I'm just sorry. For the big day. Can I tell my Christmas story? Yeah. For Christmas, this is what we sell the most of every year. Great story. Brent, interrupt, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> you yeah. write that one down for the grandkids. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I was breaking one right here, and we had another guy right here, this guy James. I was taking out those buttons, and my knife slipped and went straight into my arm. And it was, like, objectively hilarious, because my arm just sprayed blood oh all my God. over James's face and hat. It was amazing. Anyway, that's Working my Working in a butcher shop. <laughs> <laughs> went to the hospital with all these uh, wrappings around it. They put a band-aid on it? And then, yeah, I had like four doctors <laughs> around me, and then they like take it off, and I have like just a small little scar, and they're like, I tell you what though, puncture wounds hurt like hell, right? Yeah, it did not feel good. My fucking arm I got was, stabbed like, once. For a week. Yeah? All right, let's, right. Get, let's get into that. <laughs> yeah. So what do you guys we're, like to do with some of these trim? We're gonna reserve all of this, yep. and what we do is mix it with fresh ground beef, and it is a perfect that's dry aged burger grind. That's flavor. Exactly. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a pretty good way of just showing exactly What's going the on. difference. Yeah. Wow. The texture is so much firmer, huh? Oh, my God, yeah. And this is the raw, unaged version of that comparison shot. That looks awesome. Yeah. Looks amazing. That's going to taste so good. So, we're just going to trim. Just oh, it the, smells so good. I smell it? Yeah, you get in there, bud. 
just the tiniest oh, of the fat of the fat on the on the outside. Okay, just get that fresh, just fresh pearly. Exactly, because if you render this fat down, exactly, it's going to be super funky, and uh, we're going to get enough of that from uh, the steak itself. Sure. So, you know, we want to clean it up just a little bit. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Boom. That looks so right. good. We got a steak. I'll Which do one. Do you want to do it? This one. Do you want to do? I'll cut this one. Okay. Oh, oh, mama, huh? Whoa, oh. that is really firm. Well, that's even trimmed a little. We should really do that. <sighs> Smells like dry aged beef. Yeah. Kind of looks like dry aged beef. It doesn't have like the uh, earthy like mushroominess of dry aged, which is really nice. It just smells more intensely like beef. Intense beef. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Let's cut the pork. I'm so excited you ignored us completely and just went with the 30 days on this. I'm so excited to try this. <laughs> Guess what? The skin's really hard. Oh, leather now. Yeah. Well, that's cool. You can see the blade under the skin. Yeah, real cool, Brad. It is cool. It is cool, right? It is cool. Yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. Look at that. There's your, there's your booby boy. That looks wow. great. I mean, it looks amazing. Huge wow, yeah, visual big, difference. Big. All right, get that one out of here. Slap the raw in. All right. Boom. Yeah, look at that. Tighten it right up. That looks like a joy to cook. We'll put a little salt on these bad boys. We'll cook them up, huh? Can I think How do you guys out? like to cook? I mean, I want to taste the meat. Like, I don't want to go covering this up with, with jazz. No. Simple. And then, we're, how do you feel about salt after. content? Lots. Much? Lots, no. right? Oh, it I'm like, it. As long, yeah, as much as it'll hold on its surface. OK. <laughs> Pick your pan, boys. I need a big boy because I got a yeah, big Yeah, you bone. get the big, you get the all small. Right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll I can't get over the this texture. Oh, yeah, that smells good, huh? Zingo bingo. I had this uh, asthmatic. Oh, I'll wait for Hunzi. This is a fun story. I haven't been fighting. I haven't had this, like, uh, asthmatic bronchitis, like, uh, a week ago. But they got me on this, um, it's like, I think it's a steroid prednisone. Man, I tell you what, that stuff is like a, a class one drug or some shit. I'm bouncing off perk, the wall. Perk you up? Yeah, man. I'm like, I feel like I'm like, like I want to clean the house. I want to freaking yell at people. I, gotta, I feel like I'm on steroids. Like, okay, people get like road ragey. I get like a little. You can see how much fat is rendering in that pan just from starting on the fat side edge. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna see her. Here you go. Ooh. Steak and eggs. Just. Uh huh. Ooh, meow. That's that's All funky. Right. That's funky. That's pretty good, though. Yeah, that's good. That's so, gonna be good. That's a friend of zone? It's boy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Boys, mama! <laughs> I got a couple extra. <laughs> Do some push-ups real quick. <laughs> and eat these steaks. Make them all pull in a blender with some <laughs> milk. <laughs> what happened in the last 30 seconds? Anybody? <laughs> what do you guys call, what's this called? Rib cap. The rib cap. Isn't there a, what's the other name for it? It's like uh, starts with an S or something. No? Yes. Yeah, something like that. Thank you. Wow. From the backcourt. Yeah, he's line. good like that. Is that too rare for you guys? Nope. No. <laughs> I like the texture. And when it's rare, the dry age, is, I, it's easier to eat. Yeah. Like the fresh steak sometimes. Hey, Annie, get in there. I think rare also shows the textural difference mm -hmm. between unaged it's and like unaged. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. That's really good. It it's is really, really good. good. It's very light. It is. Like very it's clean. Yeah. It clean. The funk is very subtle. It, yeah. it, it's yeah. not even funk. It's more just like depth. So this is meat hook. This is a total of 45 day now dry aged. Right. 100% uh, grass fed. Yep. Kinder hook farm. Woo! Doing the good work. Oh yeah. Just uh -huh. heat heated it through. <laughs> just warmed it up a bit, huh? So good. 
I actually don't mind it if it's rare. If it was fresh, I wouldn't like it as much. But the dry I think, age, I kind of I kind of like yeah, it a little rare. Kinda I think the, the tuna is a good comparison because you get more minerality out yes. of grass finished beef, and uh, when it's dry aged, like the combination of those two two things really, I think, does eat oh, like tuna. And you should stick around for the pork too. It's, t- it's time. I'm so excited for this. Texture looks great. I mean, I keep comparing it to fish, but it looks like like sword swordfish. Fish. Yeah. yeah. I've never dished a pork and fish like that. So good. And there's that sweetness to it. A little sweetness. And it almost has, in the best way, like a wild gaminess. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good way to describe it. And the texture is just... The texture is phenomenal. But also interesting that, like, I feel like with dry-aged beef, everyone's like, blue cheese, mushroom. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't get any of that with this. I'm getting, like, egg corn, Mm -hmm. grassy. It's delicious. Oh, very good. Let's, right. not, let's not say it's too wrong. loud so other people come over, but it's very good. Oh. Well, I really didn't see the pork chop being the dark horse in this race. Yeah. You know, that's what I, that's what I love about it. It's a good experiment, though, you know? The little wild card, sometimes a little happy accident. Yeah, you know? totally. FaceTime. John A. Uh, hello. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Hey, uh, John, I'll call you back in one minute. I did audio only by accident. Okay, sorry. Okay. How, I don't know how to do this. Oh, video. All right, there he is. Today I cut up and, and cooked the meat that we dry aged here. Uh, came out pretty awesome, I'm not going to lie. I wanted to, I wanted to check in with, the, with that nice slab of meat that we left with you in your, in your optimum conditions. How we, how's that going? That's looking pretty nice. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Take a walk yes, take a walk, man. There he is. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, wow. That looks great. Our mine got so much darker. Probably because it was drier, right? In a smaller atmosphere. Yeah, if it, that's, uh, that's pretty customary. If a piece is, uh, if it's too dry, it's just going gonna... to. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Preference. Trial and error. Yeah, it's learning. And as long as you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the steak and the flavor. Oh my God, it was amazing. Well, hey, thanks, brother, and uh, have a good have a good holiday, man. All right, I'll let you know when the video comes out. Later, bro. Oh, end and accept. Hello. Oh, no. And there's one thing I learned from this dry aging experiment with you guys and with John from Prime Foods, is that, you, you know, you, there's no point in doing this with just, like, don't just go to some, some BS supermarket and get any. You want to, you have one ingredient, you know, which is the meat that you're using, to the best means of your abilities, get the best thing that you can. Couldn't sure agree you more. Yeah, Couldn't right? agree more. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You spend 30 days, right. like, Putting a paper towel in there, making sure the moisture is right. It becomes like, a little baby. Yeah. yeah. Make a rig if you want. Get into it. Find out how you can battle humidity problems and, uh, and share them with me in the comments. Just get out there, experiment, have fun, learn, make friends, yeah, make dry friends. age things. Here. If you make Just... mistakes, do it again. That's what life's yeah. all about. Gentlemen, thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Yeah, this yeah. was great. Yeah. Let's and, eat the rest uh, of this pork. Okay. Yeah, all right. In case we did not hear from you, your social will be blocked permanently. To connect with the officer now, press... What do we think? Hunzi, scam or no scam? With a concerned department. We're going to go scam. We did not receive any input. I'm pretty sure that's not how Uncle Sam calls you, is it? Security personal regarding your social... you. I'm perfect. Can you see her? Oh, yeah, she's peeking. That's who called me. Lady of Liberty, that was her. So I don't have a social security anymore. I mean, we've tried it. We've pushed the envelope. We've dry aged sure, well yeah. after, over past the thir- a thousand days. Have you eaten a thousand year old? A, a thousand, thousand, day, thousand absolutely, day. Absolutely, absolutely. Was, and you get those big. It was. It was. I know. This ain't goodbye. Good I'm gonna be. You're gonna be hearing a lot of me. Right, good. Within the 45, 90 days. You're, oh God. Oh. Nick, Brad's calling again. Please, I can't do it again. You got. You, can you FaceTime him? <laughs> it's like three times a week. This guy's trying to FaceTime this piece of meat. 